When I was a kid, I was fascinated by magic. Like this. The magic of magnets is that they don't behave like anything else you're used to interacting with. They have this kind of mysterious force between them. How do they do that? And I still remember doing that experiment where you take a bit of tissue and you put it at the bottom of a cup, completely submerge the cup underwater, and you pull the cup out to find that the tissue is perfectly dry. And what about writing? Little marks on a page that other people can turn into sounds, words, meaning. That is pretty amazing. Maybe that's the reason why the first thing I wanted to be was an author. Oh, an author. Well, I said poet. You did I say poet. Close. Yeah. yeah. I had an electronic typewriter. Gives you an idea of just how old I am. But in my stories, absolutely nothing happened. Nothing. And in grade two, my groundbreaking work with baking soda and vinegar had me prematurely declared a doctor. And something else that seemed really magical to me was plants. The fact that you can get these incredible green structures out of just, you know, ordinary brown, mucky dirt. And the fact that you can get stuff out of here that you can eat? Unbelievable. You know, my pocket money every week was about $2, and I would walk up to the local nursery and buy a strawberry plant, which cost exactly $2, and I would come back and I would plant it right here, and then after a few weeks, I would eat the strawberries that it made. That was amazing. When I was about eight, I planted these two grapevines. Look how huge this is. Man, in the summer, it just makes barrels and barrels of grapes. It takes over the whole half of the yard. What's not magical about that? One time, I took a sunflower seed out of my sister's hamster food, and I planted it right here in the garden. Covered it over, and in a few weeks, we had a five-foot-tall sunflower right here. Where did all that mass come from? And then later in life, you realize this force that you can feel between macroscopic objects is actually a scaled up quantum phenomenon of the individual electrons, these tiny subatomic particles, which are all aligning in these particular objects, but in virtually no others, to create this, this force that you can feel? That's better than magic. That's science. You know, Einstein had this quote. He said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is. You know, I, I feel like personally I flip-flop back and forth between the two views. But with magnets, magnets are always a miracle. It is often said that all kids are natural scientists, but over time and in their interaction with parents and the school system, that kind of curiosity and sense that everything is magical is drummed out of them. But if you have a look at the numbers, and I'm going to refresh the page here, you'll find, I think, there are a lot of people who still have that wonder. Over a million who have found me. And it's up to us to make sure that everyone else doesn't forget to keep cultivating the inner child in, in everyone we meet. So I want to say thank you to everyone for subscribing and for staying curious, for still seeing the magic in everything. It's our job to get out there and make sure that everyone else, all those other kids, they don't forget. Check out these magnets. They're actually squishy. Look at that. Oh. They're nuts. Look at that. How amazing is that? It's pretty cool, right? I mean, it's not just me. <laughs> On the topic of quality versus quantity, I just wanted to say thank you for all of your very thoughtful comments. I must be the only channel on YouTube that's getting like essay responses and reading through all of them. You made some really good points and I wanted to address some of the topics that I saw. I mean, first of all, I agree with many of you, quality is not just about production values. I actually cut a little segment out of that video where I was talking about this. Now, of course, this whole time I've been vague and I haven't defined quality. Of course, quality is not just production values, it's not just the fact it's in HD and the sound is good. The point of quality is that it's things people want to watch, as Gray says. So maybe if you're sitting on your bed talking about things that people really want to hear about, then that's quality. Just make sure to swear pretty often. 
By quality, I mean everything. The ideas, the presentation, the style, the personality, all of it. Okay, second, the reason that Minute Physics and Vsauce are not on that list of educational channels is because each channel gets to categorize itself. And Minute Physics and Vsauce are both under the science and tech categories. So really, they are educational channels and they should be right at the top there. But just the way people have categorized themselves, you know, Khan is the top educationally categorized channel that exists. Third, that video was not meant to be an insult to the Khan Academy. I recognize that it's different, it's educational more than it is edutainment, right? It's there for a different purpose, it's for more academic learning. I totally get it. I was just using it as a counter example. Really, I could have used any other channel, like Wheezy Waiter, for example, makes a lot of frequent content. I love what he does, I think it's excellent, and he's built an amazing community. The question I would ask is, are there beard lovers out there who don't know that they could be beard lovers? In other words, are there people out there who would love Wheezy Waiter's stuff but just haven't discovered it yet? And my answer to that is yes, and the suggestion I would make, my hypothesis about what would work best for increasing the number of beard lovers in the world, would be for Craig to produce less of really high quality stuff that's really well thought out and has a lot of planning behind it. That's just a hypothesis, but I'm not making a suggestion. I'm not insulting Craig. I think he's excellent and amazing. He's built a great community. I'm just saying that is my guess for what would happen if he were to do that, but maybe he doesn't want to do that, so that's fine. Really, the channel that I want to compare most with is my own. I kind of want to A-B test. I mean, what would happen if I produced more stuff more frequently that had sort of less planning and was kind of more slapdash thrown together? That's kind of what I do here. Uh, but you guys know me, and you know what I'm doing on the, on the one Veritasium channel. So, you know, this is, is kind of a, a secondary thing. Ah, Vancouver is gray and rainy, and tonight I am taking a flight back to Sydney. I'm looking forward to that. How'd you get on? Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> 